Hello, folks. I think for most of you, the idea of working from home has been sitting in your pajamas with your bunny slippers on, playing with your pet. Hopefully, you're all practicing safe, proper behaviors as far as sanitizing your hands to help prevent the virus. But today, we're not going to keep talking about, I'm not going to make jokes about working from home because it's become a rather serious issue. So let's take the rest of this webinar and let's talk about the serious issues that we really do have to help you deal with in being HIPAA compliant and having a secure environment for you and your staff while they work from home. So basically, and what I'm going to do, the format for today's webinar is going to be pretty straightforward. What we want to do is spend a few minutes, 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour, talking through what are the, the questions that we have been fielding from our clients and from folks around the market about the challenges that they're dealing with in, the, in this time of crisis. Okay. Now, what we want to do is, as we get through the, the initial education part, what we're going to do is we're going to spend the rest of the webinar, uh, probably as, we're going to spend as much time as we can, just offering a, a Q&A session for all the questions that, that we're, we're getting from folks. So today, you're going to have myself. I am Mark Haskelson. I'm the president of Compliancy Group. You're going to have Bob Grant, uh, Grant uh, who is my partner, co-founder, and the gentleman who is one of the top HIPAA experts in the country. Uh, and then also Paul Redding, who is our VP of Cybersecurity who's going to be around and in between the three of us we're going to do our best to answer any questions you have about the issues you're grappling with in you and your staff working from home. Okay so um, first off what we really want to do uh, just just to let you know compliance group and their webinars we've been doing webinars for a long time uh, all of our webinars and all of our resources I'll help show you links later are available on our website they, uh, you do not have to be a client you are welcome to download them uh, and we hope that you will take us up on that. Uh, as we go through the webinar, like I said, the first half hour, we're going to stick to just answering, uh, just stepping through the data. And then what we'd like to do is um, open it up for your questions. So if you are not familiar with GoToWebinar, uh, on the right-hand side, it was where it usually is, you have the ability to post a question to us. Uh, post the question, basically I'll field them, and one of us will do our best to answer them for you. Now, if you are uh, uh, already familiar with Compliancy Group, fantastic. If you're not, uh, we, we are a leader in what is helping organizations um, by basically providing a compliance tracking solution. So um, over half the medical associations, uh, you, you know, um, Many of the, uh, on the cybersecurity side, recognize us as leaders or, or, or channel chiefs in helping people understand or simplifying really what is this complex world of compliance so that, it's, so that you can focus on your business. And we are very proud that, um, and as we go through this today, uh, if there's data that we're sharing that is new to you or different, uh, please know that, that we have, um, in our world, uh, we have been involved with many audits. We're involved in two or three on any given month. Uh, we are proud to say that we've always been able to help our clients clients uh, prove their good faith efforts and therefore we've never had a client fail an audit. So the data we're going to share with you today uh, is um, truly the right way to do this. There's lots of ways of doing it, but we're going to show you a way that we think is truly safe for you. So um, key takeaways from today. So we realize that we, we've been um, providing free education to the market for a while, uh, and we've been getting over the last couple of weeks since the, the, what's been going on with the virus. Uh, now we have, we're seeing a common set of questions coming up. H how to be compliant working from your home? What's going on with HIPAA and telehealth and the changes in some of the regulations? And then there's large growth in what is um, video conferencing being used to speak to other internally or to you, what is your patients? And what are the rules around that? The goal we're gonna try to give you today is some basic understanding of the do's and don'ts and some tips and tricks that you and your staff um, can use as you are going through this tough time of working from home rather than being at your offices. So um, I'm going to start off, I want to try a, a quick poll because we want to understand uh, who, what is the, 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 the big things you want to learn today. So if you could take a look at this, okay, I'm going to launch the poll. Um, what we'd like to do is if you could take the time and answer, really, there's going to be three questions. How to keep my organization compliant? How to, uh, am I interest, more interested in how to work from home in a secure fashion? And then if there's another reason why you're, um, why you're paying, why you signed up for this webinar today. Folks, we're only going to have a couple of polls in here. We just want to get a sense of, um, we try to tailor the, the, the content to make sure we're answering questions for you. Uh, we also do like to do what we do with a lot of these is we turn them into infographics so that you can share them with your staff uh, or share them with other folks that you think it'd be relative to. All right. So, okay, 
Let me, uh, I'm gonna close this out. It looks like we pretty much got everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna share the results just to give you a sense of what, we, what, I found, what we're finding here is that um, the majority of you, 61% of you were joined us today or, or were requesting on how to keep my organization compliant while working remotely. Uh, you have 33% of you folks that you know really worried about uh, the general uh, security issues from working from home, and a couple of you have other reasons. Hey, that's great. Um, thank you for joining us. Okay. So now let's keep going on what is the content here. So first of all, I want to explain what President Trump did and did not do when he said that HIPAA had been that some of the regul the regulation had been changed. Okay, the law is not changed. Um, what has what it does happen. Uh, HIPAA as a law, which is around the protecting of information or patients' information, in times of emergencies, um, the government has uh, can often choose to relax the rules in certain parts of HIPAA to make basically to make sure that that patients and the healthcare or uh, basically the United States is being properly served. Okay, so. Um, the law was not removed. You are still have to be HIPAA compliant. And probably the most important thing that I, the point that I'm going to make here is for those of you, if you were already HIPAA compliant and correctly, the challenges of this particular event and an emergency like this where you had to work from home, you would not have had any of these issues. Your systems would have been set up, your staff would have been trained, you would have had what's called a, you know, a disaster recovery plan or what I prefer to call a business continuity plan in place, and you would have been ready for this. But okay, let's explain the rules. So first of all, one, the expansion of access for coverage for patients. So because there are so many patients now that can not, not come to your office for lots of reasons, it is now okay to do that. Okay, where before there were some strict rules around when you could use telehealth tools uh, to provide services to a patient. Two, they have also relaxed um, the financial provisions to allow you to bill for those events so that you can, um, in, you know, so that you're not being challenged with some of the rules historically that prevented you from billing or had restrictions on how you billed for a phone consultation versus a live consultation. Lastly, okay, um, they have they are waiving the potential HIPAA, HIPAA penalties for what is good faith use of telehealth during the emergency. So what I do want to stress here, this doesn't mean you can use every possible tool and there's no rules about compliance. It says you are expected to continue to use good faith efforts to use what would be HIPAA compliant tools and protect the patient, you know, the, the, your patient's privacy. Okay, so for example, um, there are certain apps that are uh, are truly HIPAA compliant, where there are additional uh, um, features that you can add um, that would allow, for example, something like Zoom or GoToMeeting to be made HIPAA compliant, where its normal scenario is not. Okay. One thing I'm going to stress about this, and we should talk about, it, is in all of the cases of this of this in the state of this of this current crisis, you should still be trying to follow HIPAA compliant rules and use HIPAA compliant technology because a couple of things are gonna happen. Notice it says good faith, right? So we're, we're expecting you to still do the right thing. And then two, when this is over, you don't wanna be in a position where the technology that you invested into is not gonna be able to serve you going forward, okay? So um, things that are not permitted in the technology are you know, what would be public facing tools like Facebook Live, Twitch, TikTok, et cetera, which, were, which should not be used because are, those are not HIPAA compliant. They're not secure point-to-point -point messages of communication. So um, we've been getting a ton of questions here. So, I mean, and, and we're hearing everything from, are my employees still compliant? How to speak to patients? How to speak to each other? You know, is this safe? Are there different rules about engagement? There are really, first of all, let me explain to you, there are, HIPAA is HIPAA. Other than the relaxing of the certain rules, it is still the same law. Now, additional items, and from a technology perspective, um, in telehealth. So there's video conferencing and messaging applications, okay? Now, they still should be secure, uh, but in today's time, and we'll talk about some of the, uh, the realities of people trying to get themselves set up in this, in this uh, very crazy, busy environment, there's, you still have challenges around how to share patients' records, uh, and you know we, there, there are either some tool, you may have components of your EHR that let you to do this automatically, or there may be some tools that you need to engage with. 
mobile health apps. Um, there are lots of applications that have been created, um, not just for the emergency, but, but in general about mobile tools to help you and your patients interact with each other uh, to provide a better quality of service. And then lastly, if you are involved where there is remote monitoring of your patients, um, there are tools that from a telehealth perspective, the government is saying we, we, we understand uh, that it is now it is necessary to use those because the option of these folks coming into your office uh, or perhaps you going to see them is now dramatically limited. So um, how do I talk to my patients? The most common ways of talking to your patients are going to be using applications like Zoom, Skype, go to meeting. By the way, I, we have no particular pr um, preference. The government does not have any preference what you use. Uh, I can say there are some of the um, video conferencing applications and messaging applications that are by design meant to be HIPAA compliant versus some that under no circumstances would they ever be considered HIPAA compliant. So for today, um, we were, unless you, we'll wait for your questions to guide us about how deep you'd like us to go into the requirements and the technical requirements, but some of the basics are it has to be secure, um, they have to be willing to sign business associate agreements, and the organization needs to be HIPAA compliant. One of the things a lot of people misunderstand during, um, in general, but also very much in this time, is technology is or is not compliant. Technology is or is not secure, okay? organizations are compliant. So um, when we talk about the technology you're going to be using, uh, the, the, the real issue is does the company that's backing them have the right policies, procedures, that they address their risks correctly. Now, um, just some very basics of working from home, okay? So um, if you hopefully had these things in place, and by the way, what we're going to be talking about here, what we're going to be talking about as we go through this particular slide, this is what the law required anyway. Okay, so um, in your bring your own devices, BYOD, and remote policy, uh, remote employee policies and procedures. If you do not have policies and procedures about people using their own technology or about when they are not in your office, the responsibilities they have in how they interact with your patients, the information and the technology, um, you should have one. Okay, now the next thing you want to do, especially if people, as people are going home, um, a lot of folks are using you know, the standard um, uh, routers and cable modems that came from their various different companies. Um, they come with default passwords. Do understand that if your administrative password was admin, that's a pretty dangerous thing. Okay, so one thing you should ask your people from working home is one of the first steps is please make sure that their routers are, you know, that have proper secure passwords. Okay, now, as you are talking about people using devices that you had not issued to them, right? So they're using things from their home. Um, it is important to make sure that the, the devices that they have themselves are, are encrypted and that they have proper passwords built into them, okay? So in other words, it's not okay, you know, if, we, if you have, you know, your iPad at home or your computer that you use at home and you don't wanna have a password on it, that's fine. But when it comes to it being used in regards to a work situation, um, and in this case, a work situation that falls under healthcare or HIPAA regulations, they have to have proper passwords and encryption in place. I will say most of these things are free or built into your software. If you're on a Mac or a PC, um, both of them, the latest versions offer the ability to encrypt um, and have more advanced protections. Now, next thing you wanna do, um, any of the devices that you are using, please make sure that they are up to date. Um, this is one of the most basic things that a lot of people uh, kind of overlook, uh, and that is, um, if, if it, you know, I don't think uh, Apple is that concerned about GarageBand that every two weeks they need to update it. Um, what they're really saying is there's a known vulnerability in the application. They have built in or they have updated the software to protect it. But if you are not doing um, backups, if you don't have you know, up-to-date antivirus and anti-malware applications, you unfortunately are making yourself um, much more vul vulnerable. Okay, um, any PHI that you're gonna be working with should be properly encrypted. Now, folks, I know this is gonna be a little more difficult because you may have had uh, an encrypted application at your office that you may or may not have access to when you're working remotely. Uh, but please, if you don't have, you should have them in place. There's lots of applications you could deploy that are uh, not particularly expensive. Or uh, if it is your patients sending information into you, let's say via email, a packet of information you sent them to complete uh, before, this, before the, 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 the appointment, um, please remind them that they are, or, or warn them that they are sending it to you in an unsecure fashion, just so that they're aware of the risk. Okay. Now, um, employee use of a VPN. 
uh, and, and a VPN, uh, you know, is, is, is um, well, actually, let me ask, we're, we're going to do the, the next polling question. Do you guys know what a VPN is? Okay, and I'm just kind of curious because before I explain the use of a VPN, I'm curious to see how many folks on the call with us today are actually familiar with a VPN and what its purpose is. Okay, so pretty simple, straightforward question. You either know what this is or you don't. Okay, um, and uh, you know, we, we, you know, we're not looking to. Uh, we're not okay. So it looks like we're almost done. Wow, you guys answered quickly. All right, so I'm going to close this poll out. Last chance to get in there. So. I'm going to share results. Basically, 68% of you understood what a VPN is. 32% of you did not. There's nothing wrong with not understanding what a VPN is. Okay. But what you do want to understand is when it comes to what you're when you are working from home, you really want to have you you want you or your staff to have a VPN in place because what that does is for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a virtual private network. Um, think of it is you know think of the old-fashioned days of Get Smart kind of dating myself here, what that was was the dome of silence, okay? It allows two endpoints to communicate in a secure fashion that if someone did try to, um, you know, there's various different hacking tools that are there, it protects you, it protects the information that you're exchanging uh, it, so that other people can't access it. It also, if you want to have a little fun, uh, some people are used to using it because it allows you to change your address. I mean, it does have the ability to also make you look like you're calling in from somewhere else, but that's not its purpose for, for security. Its purpose for security is that now you have a, a direct channel in between you, your home, and what is your office, um, depending on how you host your office's equipment, that is now a secure connection that is, that is basically protected from, from prying eyes. So um, internal communications, uh, this is actually, we are users of Slack. Um, Slack, by the way, um, th th this particular set of pictures is actually the Motley crew of my company. Um, we use it, a um, couple of things I'm gonna talk about internal communications. Um, you do want them to be secure, so you can use the Zoom, the Slacks, um, you know, things like WhatsApp is a free application you can use. You may find that if you are uh, hard pressed, if you're having a tough time for some smaller independent practices, uh, but there's a lot of different tools that exist today that allow you to share stuff internally. I will say one of the kind of like on a tip and trick, um, working remotely can be very isolating. Um, one of the things I do recommend people do is like in our case, uh, we have um, very brief, um, but we have, a, you know, meetings once a day for the staff to get together and just update each other on what's going on. All right now, um, the nature of my business accommodates once a day is, is appropriate. Uh, you know, in your business, you may need to have periodic, you know, touch bases throughout the day. Um, but do make, uh, one of the things I would stress is make, make part of it just the, the human interaction component that people are, are going to be missing working remotely. If nothing else, you know, um, I know in my case, uh, we, we, we've been pretty much quarantined for like two weeks. Um, you know, my wife, three daughters, my mother-in-law, my dog, we're all getting a tad stressed out. Right, so a little bit of a communication outside of the uh, outside of the house is actually a nice and rewarding thing. All right, now, um, how can you do all this stuff safely? All right, today, like I said, if as you ask questions later, we'll go as deep as you want into the technology and the HIPAA requirements. But let's start off with just some very basic things. So just like in your office, you know, this is not an opportunity for your 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 teenager to look over your shoulder and see what mommy or daddy does at work during the day. OK, the information you're going to be looking that you are working with um, is still PHI. It is protected information. Um, it's the patients and you are not supposed to be sharing it with anybody else. Um, if do, in general, I would advise not printing documents. Um, if you really do, if it's absolutely critical, please, you know, make sure you have a shredder or some way of just, you know, locking them up uh, in a secure cabinet, etc. cetera. Um, you know, you are you should not be doing any of this or especially when it comes to critical records if you're accessing into your ehr um, you should not be doing this on a shared computer okay now if you absolutely have no choice there's a couple of tools and and, and or capacities that you can set up multiple profiles with different passwords you absolutely should be doing that um, so as an administrator you can set yourself up um, and, and set the rest of the company the rest of your family up on a, on a standard Okay, where they can't do that. Do use a secure connection, such as a VPN, we've already talked about. Um, do not throw away sensitive information. So if you did have to print some stuff out, you know, please shred it or lock it up. Um, if you're going to have to do calls, be sensitive to the fact that you should not be doing this in your kitchen if there's a bunch of people around, right? It goes back to protecting the PHI. 
Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about email scams. Unfortunately, in this tough time, uh, the bad people in, in the world have not stopped being bad. Okay, so there are still lots of what's called phishing scams and a fair amount of scams around you know, people selling technology or offering to help you with technology uh, that, that are not appropriate. Last thing is, um, as you come and go, just like we'd advise you in your office to make sure your screens turn off, it is particularly important at your home. Um, if you're going to get up and go get lunch, please make sure that you log off or log out. Uh, you don't want your teenager who wants to uh, decides that they want to go um, gaming online um, to accidentally jump on and be using or, or exposing what is your very sensitive data uh, to what be what could be dangerous situations. Okay, um, this is going to be another one of those um, you know uh, polls. Do you guys have a, a have a work from home policy? Okay, or, a, or a remote employee policy. Uh, hang on one second, I think I'm gonna shut it. It's gonna give you the results first. Let me get you back to the poll. All right, give me one second here, folks. Okay, all right, so do you have um, a remote uh, work from home, remote employee, could have many different names. Um, do you guys have policies um, in your organizations today that, that address when someone is working outside the office? Okay. Everyone, a couple of seconds here to get all those answered. Okay, all right, I'm gonna close this out. We're gonna talk about it. Okay, you are almost exactly 50 50. Okay, you're 49% of you say yes, you do, 51% uh, of you say no, you don't. This is, um, this is one of the areas where I'm gonna stress again you should have been HIPAA compliant to begin with, folks, and if you were. You would have had a policy. You would have had things like a bring your own device policy, okay? So that you would have been in a situation like this. You would not have been scrambling to get it. By the way, don't don't lose hope. Um, uh, for the folks on the call today, um, there is um, we have resources or, or free resources that we're going to make available to you at the end of the webinar. Uh, one of them is be, is a bring your own device and work from home policy, okay? So um, let us keep going on the issues that we see people grappling with. So. Um, we are seeing phishing scams have been around for a while. Um, hopefully you have done proper security training for your staff that they're familiar, that if they do get a phishing scam, how not to react for it. But um, just about, there are some telltale signs. So emails asking for personal information, if the address it comes from does not look genuine, so if it's looking like it's coming from your EHR, but it has a weird email address, um, you know, general quality, um, uh, the way it was written, um, you know, another very common is forcing you to a specific website. In other words, if, uh, if the bank has a problem, your EHR is a problem, they're going to tell you to go log back in again. They're not going to give you a special link and say, click here. They might after you went to the website and requested to change your password, but then they should not be sending it to, to, to directly. Um, attachments, do be weary or very leery of attachments that, that, that come to you. Uh, unless it's something you requested, um, do understand that that is a very high likelihood that that is a, um, is, is a malware attempt. Okay. And then illegitimate um, URLs, um, look carefully because you'll see that sometimes it looks very much like it was being sent to you by the organization, but you'll see it's spelt wrong or it has, um, it's not, you know, it's part of a longer URL or, or an address on the internet. These are strong signs that you're dealing with something that is um, malware. Okay, so um, how to, you know, how, since so many of you said you were interested in how to manage your organization virtually, um, you, you were supposed to be HIPAA client compliant and being HIPAA compliant, you would have done a security risk analysis. You actually would have done all six required audits, audits um, before you sent all your folks home. But in this case, you know, we're, we're going to presume that we are dealing with, let's say, the reality of uh, you already have uh, people working from home. If you're like, for example, we are domiciled in New York. Uh, we have officially been on quarantine. Uh, so we, you know, we have not been able to work in our offices. So um, come eight o'clock Sunday night, you know, or whatever our people had was what they had. OK, so bring your own device and remote employee policies and procedures. Um, do require all of your employees to use a VPN. Um, there are many of them that, you know, that can be, you know, for a couple of bucks a month, you can down, you know, you can have access to one. 
Okay, so this does not have to be, although I would recommend, I would have preferred uh, that you, you have the more advanced tools that are available in the commercial space, um, but there are lots of good, um, let's say, uh, um, uh, you know, available to the, to the average user uh, for just a couple of dollars a month that you can get access to. Okay, um, as you are beginning to use technology, so the, the relaxing around the telehealth issues, just be aware that those tools you're gonna be working with um, you should still be trying to find tools that are HIPAA compliant. Okay, so if you're, if you, you know, you can see on their websites. If not, um, you know, for example, there are resources like Compliancy Group where you can go to our site. Uh, we have a HIPAA Alliance Marketplace where we can share where organizations that we know are absolutely compliant and have, that you can work with. Okay, last thing is monitoring. Um, part of HIPAA is 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 monitoring and auditing. Okay, um, so you really should be making sure you're not just letting these people run rampant. Uh, make sure that you have the administrative passwords and that you are occasionally logging in and monitoring what your staff is doing. Um, encryption and backup. Uh, if there was two things that we have found to be some of the best thing, you know, the, you know if you're gonna do, well, you should always be HIPAA compliant, but if you're in a jam and you can only do the, the minimum, uh, encryption and backup become two of the most important things that you can do, uh, because if you're encrypted, they, the data they stole, they cannot use. And if you are backed up correctly, um, you are not gonna have, a, 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 um, you're not gonna have compromised service to your patients because you had the data, okay? So, um, you know, one of the things uh, you know I think is important is most people when I talk about HIPAA and I do a lot of um, uh, webinars for continuing education, I try to start off with rather than going through the details of all the the complexity of a 700 page law, but really to slow down and say, look, the concept of HIPAA compliance, okay, the concept of HIPAA was that you know on an annual basis that you will review you will assess the risks of your organization, the administrative privacy and security risk of your organizations, and that you're, the known risks, you're gonna fix them, okay? That's not a bad thing. You know, if you knew your front door was, the lock was broken on the front door, um, you wouldn't wait seven years to fix it. You would say, okay, this is critical for me to protect my, my property, so I'm gonna fix the lock, okay? Now, one of the things that happens, and this is one of the things I think is important for people to understand is, HIPAA compliance is not just to satisfy the law, Okay, in this case, as we've shared, if you were HIPAA compliant, being sending your people home would not have been as dramatic um, because you would have prepared for it. But do understand that that being HIPAA compliant is really the, a, a large part of it is having policies and procedures so that in just about any expected situation, your staff clearly knows what to do. Now, normally I would give examples of you know how to serve your patients and you know what, what to do if an underage or over, you know a par you know parent, grandparent, child, parent, child, you know, those kind of things. Um, but in, in a time like this, you would have had a business continuity disaster recovery plan, okay? So a business continuity plan, a lot of people are like, oh, I got a disaster recovery plan, you know, if my, you know, I, I have a backup of my data. Well, this is not a disaster, folks. This is a business continuity problem, okay? This is, you know, in this case, you are unable to work out of your office. So you must have a a solution that allows you to continue to do business for what could be an extended period of time. Okay, hopefully this will be over shortly, um, but I think we do have to prepare for what is at least weeks and potentially months of not being able to go to our offices and not being able to see our, our, our clients or patients directly. Now, what does this do? Having policies and procedures makes people happy, okay? There's not a question mark. The anxiety, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt goes away. What does that do? That increases patient loyalty, folks. So being HIPAA compliant really helps you provide better services to your client. And in this case, you would you know, you know, hold, you know, have proper telehealth communication protocols in place. And one of the things that I find interesting um, in that uh, we deal with a lot of different organizations, and many of them are private equity organizations. Um, in general, we find or have been reported to us that organizations that are compliant run about 15% more profitable than their peers. So they are trained, your people are prepared, and you've ultimately reduced risk. Okay, so now, do's and don'ts. Um, we talked about these a minute ago, and we're, this, is, this particular document is gonna be made available on our website, uh, and or you know, there's a couple of different ways to got it, but we, you know, don'ts, basically, don't be in a public place, don't print documents unless you have to, you know, keep this stuff off of shared computers, make sure you're using a secure connection, if you do have to throw away documents, make sure you destroy them correctly, as in shred them. 
right? If you are making phone calls um, in your home, make sure you do that in a secure room, okay? That can be, can be your bedroom, folks. It just shouldn't be your kitchen with a bunch of people running around, okay? Uh, we talked about some of the phishing scams that are happening. Please do not fall for them. Um, like I said, the hackers are, are still out there and there's, you know, health information uh, is still 10 times more valuable. And the way this looks to us in the security world is, before we had to worry about trying to get into, let's say, a million offices, Okay, and you guys had pretty good security in place. Now we're basically, you've multiplied it, now it's 10 million possible breach locations, and many of them are piece of, you know, people's homes and apartments that were not designed to be secure. Okay, and then walk away even as if you walk away from your, um, do lock off your computer if you walk away. Okay, um, uh, what I'm gonna say is we're gonna start, um, I'm seeing lots of questions coming in, please start doing them, because we're at that point, we're gonna start um, opening this up for questions. In the momentary shameless plug, folks, um, if you are grappling with this issue, please call us, okay? Compliance Group, that's what we do. We simplify compliance so you can confidently focus on your business. As I said earlier, we've never had a client fail an audit. Everything that's required to be compliant is built in. We actually give you a compliance coach that will make you compliant, okay? We do this in very rapidly in a series of half hour phone calls uh, with you, especially in downtime, if, you're, if, you are, uh, if you are officially deciding to close your office to services, this is a fantastic time. We can very quickly make you HIPAA compliant and then the next time this happens, this would not be a rough time for you. You'd actually have everything ready to roll. Okay, so now the what I want to do now is start basically um, opening this up for um, questions and resources. So what I'm going to do is let me make sure my panelists are there. I see Paul, and I'm going to get, give Bob a chance to get in there. Um, okay. So let's see. So um, let's. I'm going to take where. Let's start for the first one, which is um, um, is Ring Central meeting. Is Ring Central um, HIPAA compliant. And um, Paul, do you want to take that one? I'll let you take the tech ones. Yeah, actually, Ring Central is basically Zoom meetings. So right now, I believe you know you can use in any version of it that they have available, but they should have the same SKU, which is they have a particular product that is HIPAA compliant. Right now, given the guidelines, I think that they're allowing you to use any version that Ring Central has, but overall, they do have a HIPAA compliant SKU. That they are built on Zoom meetings. All right, next one. Um, how do I make a Zoom meeting HIPAA compliant? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so Zoom meetings, they have a HIPAA SKU. It's a specific product that you purchase. So again, right now, that's the thing that they're allowing us to do, which is to use the different versions of it. But overall, if you go to Zoom right there in their pricing, there's one on the far right that it very specifically calls out that it's HIPAA compliant. It is their medical SKU. Okay. And out I'm of the so box, couple. that product is HIPAA compliant. All right, this is when do VPN connections need to be set up for single tunnel or split tunnel? Okay, that's definitely one up your alley. <laughs> uh, so ideally, you want to avoid split tunneling. There are circumstances when split tunneling can be allowed and there can be security put around that that, that can negate the risk associated with it. But my recommendation is always going to try to avoid split tunneling. Okay. Can you comment on access to cloud-based applications from home computers? You, do you want to take that one or do you want me to, Mark? No, no, go ahead, uh, Paul. I'm, gonna give, I'm, I'm trying to give the, the techie ones over to you for a while. <laughs> sure, okay. So in, in terms of this, really you have to think about the security and the environment that you're in. We understand, and, and so will anyone, that you're at home and therefore you're not there at your office where you've got all the tools in place that you normally would. It goes back to what you were talking about in the earlier part of the presentation. You need to secure the endpoint that you're on. That means the computer or the tablet or the Mac that you're working from. You need to make sure that that's got appropriate protection. And then that use of that VPN is going to protect your traffic. It's going to keep somebody from being able to exploit vulnerabilities in that router that Comcast gave you or that you know router that you bought at Best Buy. Those devices themselves are really not you know 
geared for this kind of work. But if you put the VPN tools in place and you secure the endpoint, then you've protected your session to get you to those cloud resources. It's really just about protecting that session. All right, another two. We got, we got all sorts of good security ones here today. Uh, how to encrypt a PC at home or office? What can we use? So built into Microsoft, into Windows itself, and built into Mac are two tools. There it's BitLocker, if it's a Windows machine, and it's File Vault if it's Mac. So you wanna activate those. Uh, the downside in the Windows environment, the only rough thing here is that does not exist natively on Windows Home. You'll actually have to set up a Windows Live account. So we basically, if you go in and set up an account with Microsoft and activate it and sign into your computer with it, it'll allow you to do that as well. So they're actually built into both operating systems. I'll repeat it just for people kind of taking notes. File Vault if it's Mac and BitLocker if it's Windows. Turn those on. All right. Okay, so I'll, I'll take this one. Um, I think what the, the question is, is uh, the question was having a BA with certain vendors is okay for HIPAA. Okay, um, you under HIPAA law, and this is, um, you know, even with the relaxation under the, the current emergency guidelines, you are not supposed to share any information, any PHI with anybody that you do not have a business associate agreement in place. Okay. Now, the exception is, and notice when I, when I was explaining at the beginning, um, the issue of good faith. So in this case, if you were, um, you know, in this case, in a very tough situation, timing wise, you need to deploy. Um, your only option is to use one of the applications um, that we've talked about and you do not have the time to speak to them about getting BA agreement. Yes, you could then engage. But the, the, the you know, please do not misunderstand that this will be over at some point. Um, and your, the, 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 the concept of your good faith effort will be required that you be able to answer, you know, answer to these questions. Okay, so you really do have to have a BA agreement, but you can, uh, in some tough times, kind of have a little bit of a, of a getting it later would be acceptable in case of, let's say, the Zoom or the or the Skype. But if you are engaging with a regular vendor, we would, you know, the government would expect you to have a BA agreement in place before you did, before you engage. Um, Paul, this is another uh, techie question. Is, is there a program that encrypts text messages? The text messages themselves, no. What you want to do is use uh, encrypted messaging services. So, for example, Signal is one that I use on my phone. Uh, you referenced WhatsApp as another form of messaging service. Um, it, there are a number of different applications themselves that will encrypt the message, and it sends and receives as though it is text. But no, by definition, your standard iMessage, it's encrypted when it stores, but it's not encrypted in transmission at a level that would achieve HIPAA compliance. There are tools that do that, and there are services that do that. Some of that also comes from um, your EHR may have um, a portal to, for you to do that with. Um, so, so do ask, you know, you might find that something that's available to you that, that may have been part. Um, Bob, do we got you? We got a question. I just want to make sure I have your audio set before I toss a question your way. I am here, gentlemen. Fantastic. Okay. So this is an interesting one. We're, we've been hey, getting Bob. some really interesting questions. So this one is, could providers see patients from the patient's car without violating HIPAA? Yes, absolutely. Uh, in the... You know, again, we go back to the emergency services and things that are set forth, you know, that not, not only applies to um, uh, the telecommuting, but it also applies to when, you know, you provide services. Nowhere in the rule does it say that you have to provide services in an office environment, okay? As long as when you see people in a car, right, you protect yourself because you're not going to be six feet away from them. And if they do have COV, Right, you're you're gonna subject yourself to it, right? Um, so that's one thing to think about. But if you're gonna see people in a car, or you go to their house, or or whatever, if you do home visits, okay, one thing is to protect yourself. But there's nothing that says you cannot do that. It's kind of like think to uh, uh, home services, right? People going to homes to care for people. It's no different than that. Hey, Bob, I got another one for you. Um, wondering what best practices or protocols are for any client charts at home. Is this possible at all? 
Uh, absolutely. So again, even in your office, the requirement is, so let's, let's take the office requirement and put it in your home. So the office requirement says that you must, you know, when you leave for the day, right, that your files are secured, not, not laying out, so clean desk policy. So in your house, which who have, you know, especially for people who have families, right, that sanctuary office that you work in is, you know, you should secure that some type of lock or some type of notice on the door that they're not allowed in. And the files that are in that office should be under some type of lock and key. So whether it's a lockbox or you have a locking desk or a file cabinet in there, you should be locking those files up. So if you're going to take them home, you would be protecting them just like you would in your office. Right, let me give you, I'm going to give one, um, actually, all right, actually this one is, um, actually, uh, Bob, let me give you one more. Um, what happens with, um, if I'm engaging with a new patient, what do I do about their paperwork? Ah, perfect. So what you can do and what I suggest that you do is you create a packet and you email that packet of information to the patient prior to them coming on to your Zoom or whatever you're going to use uh, telemedicine. Now, when they fill it out and send it back, right, now you'll have the paperwork uh, that you need, and then you can put take that information and put it into your EHR or into your file folders that you have there in your office. <clears throat> now, you're not violating HIPAA because you're not the one sending the protected information. The patient is sending to you, so I would put a disclaimer that says, that if you're when you go to send this back, you should send this in some type of encrypted format, right? And uh, I think that we possibly could get by right now with the way uh, the government has stated is that you know you could have it password protected, you could have it uh, encrypted, um, you could do some type of encryption with Adobe, um, but that's up to the patient to do, not for you. When you're sending information, you need to encrypt, but if you're only sending them a packet to fill out, that's not your job to manage them sending it back to you. But I would put a disclaimer on there that says, right, be aware that when you send this back, it's gonna have a lot of protected health information and you should protect that file when you're sending it back to you. All right, let's give one more to Bob and then we have a whole bunch of security ones. Um, if a client refuses to use anything except FaceTime, could we use that? Yep, in this condition right now, the way the government has stated, you can use whatever you want. You can use two cups and a string if you wanted to. Um, they only care about that people get seen at this point. But like I, when I heard Mark say, beware that when you get, when this all goes away and it will go away eventually, Right. And the government says, OK, no more of this, you know, using unprotected communications. That person on the other end is not going to be happy that they can't communicate with you anymore via that that method. So be and especially if you have a lot of physicians that get used to using a product, they're going to be angry because now I got to use something else. That means I have to learn something else. And and now you're going to face that problem of getting people off of uncompliant to a compliant uh, type of communication. So it behooves you to try and get something that's cost effective and HIPAA compliant rather than go down the road of non-compliance, but you need to explain to that patient up front, yes, during this time of what we're doing now, I can do, do it this way, but eventually that may go away. Thank you, all right. So next couple of questions, I think, uh, uh, Paul, these are probably good for you. So I've got a series of questions around um, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, uh, Skype, and how whether or not they are compliant and if there are special things you have to do to make them compliant. So Paul, if you could kind of take all of them and explain the, the, the bits and bytes of what makes them compliant and what makes them when they're not compliant. <clears throat> so the answer is yes and yes. Yes, all of the tools that you just listed can be made to be HIPAA compliant. 
Um, and yes, there's something you need to do in each case. In the case of Zoom specifically, it's probably just the easiest one to call out. They have a product. It is Zoom. I, I touched on it earlier. It is a very specific product. It says that it is HIPAA compliant. If you select that one and buy it, then everything is basically baked in. They're encrypting the sessions. They're encrypting the traffic. They build in the right logging and all the ability to audit. All that stuff is baked in out of the box. The other two are tricky. Skype's, uh, Skype and Teams are essentially both Microsoft products. Microsoft bought Skype a long time ago and kind of has tossed them out in favor of Teams. But in both cases, you, you've got a uh, business associate agreement that says, we as an organization, Microsoft, I am, we are HIPAA compliant. We are doing all the things. We have our policies and procedures, training, all that stuff is in place. And the core product here, is encrypted and can be used compliantly. Now, go set it up. It's more complex than people want it to be. Your team's setup is directly related to the setup of all the rest of your Microsoft 365. So all that is done in the admin there. And then Skype itself, it's about what you allow and don't allow. So they don't, for example, as I understand it, Skype doesn't want to take you, have you recording their sessions if you're doing telemedicine through Skype. So they're saying that the session is encrypted, but the storage is not. Each one of you have to be very careful and read and understand what the vendor is telling you to do. Hey, and a couple of, uh, just one clarification, someone pointed out, um, it, we are not saying that all applications are okay. It is, there are applications that are designed for the, you know, more of the technical term would be point to point. Um, it is true, public facing like TikTok um, and, and Facebook Live are not appropriate under any circumstances because those are shared environments. Okay, so other people that you didn't know about could potentially be looking at it. So thank you for that, for the, for the post, the person that uh, asked me to clarify that. Um, it is not any application. Uh, it is an application that is designed for what would be, you know, a, a one to one or it could be one to many, but you're controlling who's on that call. It's not like someone could just, it's not a public facing or open um, application for people to, to, to step in. Um, uh, Paul, to you again, um, do home users need a VPN if accessing cloud-based application and if the computer is scrubbed? Um, so I, I believe when they say if the computer is scrubbed, if you're not, they're just referring to whether or not you're storing data on the system. That, that really wouldn't necessarily have much to do with whether or not you need a VPN. That would be, and I think Bob would agree with me, that would be more important, about, what would be more important there rather would be whether or not the machine is encrypted. Uh, in terms of using a VPN to get to your cloud resources, the, the reason that you want it in place is to be able to hide your traffic and kind of build in some of the rules and, and security that a normal firewall would have. So I would say, and Bob, I would throw this back to you. Do you have to use a VPN to reach your cloud resource? I would say it depends on if that website itself is encrypted and how well the machine you're working on is protected. Should you put a VPN in place if you're working from home from a security perspective? I say absolutely. Bob, what's your take on that one? Is it mandatory if the only thing you're using is a cloud resource? It, yeah, and like you said, it depends on the connection, right? So if you when you connect to that device if you have https right you know the the normal right well right then that means the so if you look at your browser right and it says that it's secure and the connection is is secure to the cloud-based environment who is controlling all the data there you know then you know from a security standpoint the technically right not you know so i'm not going to say it's 100 percent foolproof but technically the data is going encrypted across the line okay but as to paul's saying is that vpn blocks anybody from seeing inside the tunnel and so you know you do that connection from a secure to your secure computer, if it has all the protocols, you know, antivirus, malware, uh, encryption, um, and so, and strong passwords, right? So if the data is encrypted in the line, 
then you're fine, right? But if you, I've seen sub where you'll log in and, and the browser will say it's not secure, meaning that right. the connection is not. And so that's when you would need a VPN. What do you think? I, I would say basically what we're saying is you should use a VPN. It's the safest thing to do because from at least what I would say is the risk is high that unless you're really, really conscientious that you could screw up. You you would right. literally need to watch your browser constantly and make sure that you uh -huh. never go to the wrong side. The risk I, is very I, high. I agree 100%. Hey, hey guys, one qualification, because um, a couple of folks have asked this. There is a, a inexpensive version of Zoom that is not compliant. The, truly their compliant version is a more expensive version that has a higher price tag. Um, you know, we see it running about 200 bucks. So just be aware that, you know, if you wanna start using Zoom during this, let's say the crisis, and then in the future move to Zoom for more permanent, um, you know, the, the, the proper HIPAA compliant version is a $200 um, um, uh, usage fee. So that it, it does, there are some details there. And with just about all, there's a couple other questions that came in along those lines. I started working with them. I can't get Zoom to get my a BA agreement signed or for example, Microsoft, et cetera. Um, those are all things that, you know, good faith effort during this time is fine. Long-term you need to get these BA agreements or for example, if you take Microsoft, uh, Microsoft um, has language in its um, BA, I'm sorry, language in its contracts. Um, that state, you know, what your requirements are for them to complete, for them to be, um, to take on the responsibility as a business associate to you. Okay. Um, uh, interesting. Okay, this is good. I'll leave this up to either, either one of you guys. In your opinions, what are the two or three most common mistakes or vulnerabilities resulting from teleworking for companies that are not accustomed to it? That's a great open-ended question. So thank you for posting that first, folks. Two or three. I think mine is easy. I think mine is easy. That's a great question. I think the first thing is the idea that the device that you have at your house called a router is a firewall. It's that skipping that VPN thing. It's amazing how many people send all their workers home and let them jump online and start doing online banking without thinking. The number two is the device at the house. They let you go home and start working on the computer that you share with your team teenager who plays Fortnite at night with his buddies uh -huh. you know what i mean like there's, there's there's a huge risk there and then i think the last one is you forget about the monitoring logging and auditing so you're gonna have to install some kind of security tool in general that's going to be like your antivirus and your rmm but you're going to have to put something on any even if they they are using a dedicated computer at the house you still have to put something on it that allows you to say you know it was protected, you know it was encrypted, and if something weird happened, we had a tool there to prevent it. So those three things right off, I think, are just forgotten all day when you send everybody home in a hurry. Bob? Yeah, my, mine is the protection of the information at the house, right? The the encrypted laptop or desktop, the the files that people, the printed information, right? So people will say, people right. will say, oh, People will say all the time to me, okay, Bob, hey, I'm going to send this home and have this person work from home. You know, what do we have to do? Well, uh, are they going to be printing? Well, yeah, they're going to have to print. Well, printed information has what? It has PHI on it. So how are you going to, are they just going to throw it in their normal trash or are they going to, you're going to send them home with a, with a shredder, right? What are you doing? What are you doing to help that person stay in compliance? Think of that. If you think about your office and how compliant you are at your office, right? And so here's my office, I'm compliant, I have shredder bins, I shred my information, I have encrypted computers and I have all this. That home office is just a tentacle like an octopus of your home office and that's the protections. If you think about that and you have those protections in place there, then you're going to be fine. And there's nobody that can say you didn't make a good faith effort. But think about this. Think about a coat, ha a hat rack, right? Then, so I always say this to people when I'm talking about compliance. Think about a hat rack and each one of those prongs sticking out. If you leave one of those prongs open, the government's going to stick their hat on it. And they're going to try and say you're not compliant. So you want to make sure that 
under the guidelines that the government has given that you have all you have hats you have your own hats and not one prong is sticking out so when that when you're at home like paul said vpn encryption antivirus malware strong passwords printers if you're printing there you need to have give them shredders right and you need to monitor them right you have to find out what they're doing so just because somebody says here's a here's a great one i'm, I'm surprised somebody hasn't answered that asked this how do i know if that person's computer at home that's a byod bring your own device is encrypted well you've got zoom don't you so you zoom in and you have them show you their their settings on their computer show me your antivirus show me your malware show me your strong password show me your encryption on your hardware and your it person can help you with that and all you have to, all they have to do is just go in there and look and make sure monitoring key because when if one of those computers goes missing and it's not encrypted and you say well we really didn't check where you're going to be somebody's going to hang government's going to hang their hat on that little prong that you left out there all right good answers folks all right so um paul this one i think falls in your domain a couple of questions around um google products and are they hipaa compliant and i, and I think they're talking about a couple you know they're, they're, they're a global level right you know hangouts mail etc so in the case of google it's a sum not all and it's it's specific to you you have to pay for the product right so out of the box the free gmail no it's not hipaa compliant they're not going to sign your baa if you get the google professional version you get the business version and you pay per user per month uh, i want to say it's roughly ten dollars per user per month but at that level then their products most of them are hipaa compliant like google drive for example is hipaa compliant which means all the products within a google sheets and all that good stuff where where google um the hangouts question i don't believe in normal circumstances hangouts is hipaa compliant i would have to check but i think under normal circumstances that's one of them that they tell you you're not actually supposed to use for telehealth All right, let's see. A um, couple of questions around um, BitLocker, Paul. So if you could explain that, that mm -hmm. just because you have, well, explain what Windows 10 BitLocker, if you could, because there's a whole bunch of questions I have around that, if you could share that for, for okay. the crew. Sure, sure. So built into Windows itself is a product called BitLocker. Um, I, I think we have an article on how to do this on our website. You can also Google it. It's pretty easy to find, but it's just called, you would Google enabling BitLocker. Uh, assuming that your version of Windows, which is Windows Pro, assuming that you have that version and up, you will have this option in the OS. You go, you turn it on, it's going to create a key. This is a password, basically, that you have to keep somewhere and do not ever, ever, ever lose this key. In most business environments, those of you that work with IT providers, they're going to use software to enable what I'm talking about, because if you have 50 computers, you would have 50 keys. But what you're basically doing is you are encrypting everything on that hard and everything in the Windows operating itself, system itself. And if they don't have your credentials, which means your password still has to be good, but if they don't have that and they don't have that key, Everything on that drive is encrypted and useless. And again, you can Google how to enable BitLocker and it will show you the same thing. The same thing exists in File Vault, how to enable File Vault, and it'll walk you through it through the operating system. Hey, Bob, one to you, which uh, there's been a couple of questions around this, and that is what are, let's say, what are the rules about disclosure? Okay, an employee, a patient, um, you know, you know, when are you allowed to share with other people? Uh, that someone has the virus or oh. are you not allowed to share that so there is there's rules uh based off when you need an authorization from someone to release information and when you don't and this falls under when you don't you do not need an authorization to release somebody's information in the event it is protecting public health so they come to your office and they have it you can inform people stay away uh you can report them to cdc 
if they refuse to, you know, stay in their house and self, you know, whatever it's called. Quarantine. <laughs> get locked up, right? So if they refuse to stay in their house, they're going out. You do not have to get their permission to tell anyone. This is a public health crisis. And because it is, you are, you are allowed to release that information. And you can release it to CDC. You can release it to you know, their family members. You can release it to people in the general area because again, it's, it's a public health issue. All right, love. we'll take the last one or two. We're at, we're, we're at the hour mark. Just sending an email through Gmail um, on a Mac HIPAA compliant you, or Gmail address using mail on a Mac. So now I understand what they're asking. So, so Paul's probably to you. And I would say they're, they're accessing the Gmail account through their mail application on a Mac. If you are using the correct version of Gmail, itself the the paid version of the google suite that allows you to transmit phi then it does not necessarily matter that you are using the baked in mail product in microsoft but if you are using any form of office 365 <clears throat> and the reason i clarify that is there's the like baked in online version of mail if you are using microsoft's cloud it is not HIPAA compliant. So that would be where your trouble would come in. So you, you would need to make sure that all the online and cloud features of mail itself are turned off. That I would be, I would say by nature, it could be used successfully. I would be careful in that scenario because if it's the version that's tied to 365, that's your problem, not Google. Assuming you're paying for the right version of Google. All right, so if we're, we're coming past the hour. A couple of questions I'm going to answer generally. Yes, this will be recorded and be available. Um, we will be running it again. Um, the the resources that you've heard us talking about, um, uh, checklists, um, you know, how to set up Skype or Teams or GoToMeeting in a HIPAA compliant fashion, a free HIPAA training, uh, the BYO, you know, bring your own device. All those things are available if you go to Compliance Group, um, you go to our website. Uh, there's a resource section. All that stuff is available to you to download. Um, you are also at the end of this webinar because we're going to turn it off in a minute. You're going to get a question, right? You know, um, uh, you know, please answer those survey questions. We're interested very much in your feedback. Also, there were a series of much more technical questions that were actually posed um, because this is a broader group. Um, we did not go down that path, uh, but we will be doing another webinar where Paul, uh, as a cybersecurity expert, will be available to answer the more detailed questions. So for those of you that just, you know, let us know on the survey that you want us to follow up with you in regards to those, those more technical uh, asked questions, and we will gladly do so. Uh, once again, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. This was, uh, you know, we think it's a, a timely thing to help everybody. Please keep coming back to our website. You're going to see we are posting um, articles and or informational content just about every day on how to do this, how to do it securely, how to do it safely. Um, so please take us up on it. And uh, as I said, if you are, uh, if you would have liked, if you would like to be HIPAA compliant, this is what Compliance Group does for a living. We are very cost effective. Uh, you know, the you know we 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 serve everything from the smallest of single you know office organizations to some of the largest in the country. So please, if you're grappling with this problem, do know that that we would love to help you solve it. Okay. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we appreciate it and hope that you are all safe, washing your hands, have moisturizers. Um, for those of you medical professionals that are on this, we hope that you are not running out of the supplies you need. Uh, and we do hope that, that all the people who have the capacity to help you get what you need are, are working diligently to do so. So um, especially for, for all you workers, both uh, um, uh, the response workers and the healthcare workers that are that are toiling endlessly to keep us safe. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Bob. Hey, thanks, guys. Have a great day. Yeah, you guys Stay too. Well and safe. Bye now.